All right, everyone. So, uh, what a week that we just had. A lot of it was obviously coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. That's what this week was pretty much all about. Um, at the time of recording, I wanted to show you the Fed website because one big news that's not being reported very much was that um, the repo uh, facilities, which is uh, ongoing, and if you follow my work, will probably be indefinite and will grow perpetually. Although the Fed is saying that they will end around April, but I think they have uh, walked themselves into a trap here. And um, anyways, the fed repo site uh is actually down for maintenance uh but i wanted to show you that uh the uh, uh short-term repos uh the two-week repos it was oversubscribed and it was the largest amount um up to date so this is you know the program began in september of 2019 so this is something again i think uh people should watch uh be worried about because again the fed's balance sheet is increasing however the fed is saying this is qe but it's not qe uh they argue it's not qe because is this money going in for stimulus um and you know that's really what it's all about it's all about definitions and by definition qe is essentially uh stimulative right it's money that goes to um uh the markets or whatnot uh so there is you know a big amount of discussion whether it is um qe or not again i believe a lot of the repo is to keep interest rates suppressed uh because there has to be some liquidity in the market or um you know for a bank uh again we're not going to know who is receiving uh this repo could be a hedge fund major hedge fund uh but you know it could be a bank or multiple banks uh we never know and i mean there's a lot of theories out there on you know what bank it could be uh from uh, deutsche bank from hsbc but you know the repo stuff is things uh i, I want to cover and when we get to bonds quickly i want to show you something uh that i think is definitely worth your attention but what we'll do is let's look at the economic calendar quickly uh first week of friday it's always nfp which is non-farm payrolls or uh, employment in america um it is used to be a very big event but recently every week uh sorry every week on the first of the month uh first week of the month sorry um it is turning sort of into a non-event uh you can see here the job forecast uh came in better than expected by a long shot and this is the uh, jobs for uh, January of uh, 2020 um, and you can see here's all the data for NFP CAD employment again take it as you uh, want uh, this is the data that came up I, I don't really see NFP really forecast or impacting markets too much because at the end of the day folks do you really believe the Fed or the Federal Reserve or any central bank for that matter is actually going to be increasing uh, interest rates um, I, I don't think so I think it's the opposite they'll be cutting and again this is the big big dilemma if you follow my work I've been speaking about this for uh, for quite some time why interest rates are going lower probably to zero are they going negative I don't know maybe in some places they will but essentially this is the rhetoric that central banks or the fed is telling people that the economy is so strong uh that you know we have to cut rates uh so let's look at quickly at the week ahead uh see what type of data uh big data that we're expecting and again i do look for the high impact data that's obviously the uh, bigger news that's sort of what we want to look for so we can see here on tuesday on the 11th we have uh the british gdp numbers um, expected also their uh, manufacturing production numbers we have another uh, fed uh, testifying on um, uh, at the house and again this is usually just a media circus where politicians try to get brownie points with their uh, constituents and you know it's always weird like i mean you know questions on um race and gender and all that kind of stuff uh and i, I mean there's now questions on does the fed even um consider uh environment and climate change uh when they're forecasting monetary policy but i mean you know again it's a media circus for politicians to look good while attacking the fed 
we have the Royal Bank of New Zealand's cash uh, rate target. Um, Wednesday, we have uh, Lowe's sort of participation speech. Uh, we have U.S. core CPI, which, you know, obviously this is more of the inflation numbers. And this is something that uh, the Fed, you know, talks about how inflation is not um, reaching their 2% target. And perhaps they might even move it up to 3 And again, we'll cover bonds and why this whole narrative is being set up for interest rates being cut and then we have the retail sales uh to end the week on february so again you know not not too crazy in terms of the central banks and right now that is really what it's all about a lot of central bank uh data is what drives these markets so let's quickly look here at the s p and uh, a couple of um um equities uh, indices here no really trade no trade setups really that meet uh my criteria or our criteria uh at uncharted but you can see here that we did have this one lower high swing and this is something that i was talking about on my trading view accounts that we should expect at least uh one swing and we did get that better here on the four hour here's the swing and you know we did hit a very big uh, flip zone here on the four hour and you can see after that we have reversed and you know if you follow my work i've been saying this for quite some time there's nowhere to go for yield except uh the equity markets or stocks if you are any type of fund manager be it pensions mutual uh well even the big hedge funds or whatever you can't be in cash for too long uh, your job is to make yield for your clients and the only place really for yield is the stock markets. Um, you know, generally when stocks are selling off, people go into bonds, etc. You know, uh, a risk off, risk on environment. Uh, but billionaire Ray Dalio is warning about this, that really bonds are yielding, you know, uh, uh, treasuries, American treasuries are yielding. Here we have the 30 year at 2%, uh, almost, uh, well, 2.05, close to 2%. But you know, you're not making real yield anymore in bonds. And now the bond market is being traded as people are speculating whether uh, rates are going down. And we'll talk about that when we get to bonds because the bond charts look interesting. Of course, I posted the 10 year um, uh, yield and I talked about that before. The Nasdaq also uh, new time uh, all new time highs a bit of a pullback here. So again, you know, you, this is going to be very similar all time highs pullbacks for a lot of these charts. Even the Dow, I think this one's a bit more interesting to look at because the candle pattern here and the close wasn't as uh, great as we expected. But if we were going to trade something like this, you know, we would be looking for a double top type pattern, and we'd be looking for a break of this zone here, uh, a very big important flip zone. Um, and it would you know i'm looking at the longer term because as i said there's really no place to go for yield anymore um and money will always be flowing to uh equities we will take a look at the japanese yen though uh very interesting setup there and of course you know the yen is uh generally seen as a risk uh, currency a lot of money goes into the yen uh for many reasons mostly because uh the japanese government is stable there's nothing really crazy happening in japan uh but more importantly and this is what i think it's that the in terms of the western uh, alliance you know the western uh nations japan sort of following washington and allied with washington and london uh that's what i mean by west not by geography obviously because japan's in the east uh but i mean uh, alliances uh japan has the highest savings rate so uh japanese people like to save and essentially uh their yen is backed by savers whereas the dollar the u.s dollar Yes, it is the world reserve currency, but many Americans obviously are living paycheck to paycheck. And if you read my stuff on what's happening with the dollar, uh, we're essentially getting to a point where uh, the dollar is going to be either under attacked, uh, under attack, sorry, by the Russians and the Chinese. And I give a big explanation on why the dollar is what you have to watch and i think the dollar is still going higher um because of all the problems happening and that's really going to cause a lot of things to uh, go wrong in the world uh, especially with the emerging markets who are um have a lot of dollar denominated debt Ch including china and of course that does not mean gold is going to tank uh again if you follow my work 
gold is a confidence crisis metal people go into or asset or currency people go into gold when there's a confidence crisis in government uh interestingly enough we had the state of the union this week uh we saw nancy pelosi rip up trump's uh speech and i've been saying this that this election uh america is so divided that you will see a lot of violence on the street wh whatever side democrat or republican whoever wins the election uh they are going to contest it they will not accept the result uh yeah it, it it's it's brutal you know go uh, government is pretty much uh, uh ceasing to function and uh you will see crazy things i think come election time it will be very violent and the other two reasons for the confidence crisis are uh, banks and uh, fiat currency obviously so for banks you know central banks are running out of monetary policy tools they're all sort of going negative while the europeans and the japanese are saying you know it's working it's just that we didn't cut deep into the negative and we didn't print enough money so they can't admit it's not working and then fiat currency obviously goes hand in hand these guys are going to inflate the currency which means they will weaken the currency to handle the debt but also to create this wealth effect uh where it takes more cheaper dollars to buy something uh but people's purchasing powers will not be increasing this is the mid cap the us 2000 uh russell 2000 as it's known nothing very interesting here although we could say that this is perhaps a lower high swing to play with but again with these equity markets nothing very uh, uh, nothing too much, nothing catching my attention too much. Uh, the Nikkei here is something that is sort of catching my attention because we uh, attempted to break into uh, uh, highs here, not all time highs, but you know, highs here. And you can see here we sort of have a double top pattern. Uh, again, this was something we could have played because we did get our lower high swing and we did hit a big flip zone here. But these equity markets, as I said, it seems that only one swing will happen in the downtrend rather than multiple swings on the uptrend uh, again because there's nowhere to go for yield and stocks are the only place to go for yield and you know people like peter schiff are arguing that this uh, the market wanted to sell off for quite some time uh you know with people taking profits or whatnot and the coronavirus was the excuse to sell off the market and we'll see how things occur uh next week uh maybe i'll tackle about that when we get to the japanese yen so i'll hold that my thoughts on that the china 50 a very very big flip zone we talked about this last week uh we hit it and um had a really really nice bounce up to another very strong uh flip zone level here and this just to me looks like a a dead camp uh, bounce but more importantly could be our first major lower high swing that we are playing with and again you know if you're a conservative a trader you'd wait for the actual break below uh close and break because that actually confirms the lower high swing uh yes your risk to reward ratio might lessen but the probability of success is much higher whereas here if you enter you have a better risk to reward but the probabilities are not as great as entering because this could very much or uh, very easily um go the other way because this lower high is yet to be confirmed again these swings are only confirmed on the break and close uh below the previous high or low in a swing and the hang saying uh is also quite interesting um i'm still looking at this big level here at like the 2550 zone here because i think this is where the flip zone uh that we're working with is so there's still one more move uh lower to the downside um again not really a market i trade too much but has been interesting has given some good trades uh in the past and here's another very interesting one this is the only european market i'll cover uh and this is well actually there'll be one more this is the german dax very very important major major resistance level here so let's see how price reacts here will and it seems we just can't break above and close above this we tried um on in gen on january 20th around that time and we tried way back uh in 2017 and we just can't break above this area so we are here again uh this is something we were watching for the downside for quite some time but the uh, trade never materialized although i did take this a couple of weeks ago uh, on the four hour here a bit of a head and shoulder type pattern that we did trade but 
the daily break just never happened very big flip zone so this is the level that we are playing with and let's again you know let's see how price reacts here there's nothing really interesting for me until we break below this 12 900 level uh, but i do want to see how price reacts here if we do get a lot of daily or four hour candles where we're just doing nothing like something like this right because this is literally 4 8 12 16 20 24 28 32 hours of the market doing nothing uh this is generally a case that uh, momentum uh is wavering and we might see a pullback and then we have the euro stocks also at a very very major important uh flip zone level here or resistance sorry not a flip zone but resistance level here so same uh, analysis let's see how price reacts here will we get momentum to break up um even higher and i do have the australia 20, uh, 200 here uh more on the four hour again another trade that we spoke about with attempt waiting for a lower high and we did get that and we did uh hit a very big uh, flip zone level here and you can see here price is actually struggling to break and close above uh this major flip zone era uh, so, uh, well yeah it is flip zone now because it's been support and resistance and it is struggling to close back above here once we do get a really decent and strong close you can see here we're getting a lot of dojis not anything very strong and when we mean strong we mean by the body of the candle but nothing really uh convincing so this is something interesting to watch uh is this you know a type of head and shoulder here i would argue not really because we what we like to see head and shoulders after an extend extended move like this one here is a better case of a head and shoulder because it's come and it's occurred after uh, a very extended uh move but you know the pattern's interesting so let's see what happens here and then because there's a lot of canadian uh viewers and listeners the tsx did gap up uh all-time highs and it seems like uh this will probably continue again because there's nowhere to go as i mentioned for yield although we will take a look at oil and the canadian market is dominated with a lot of oil uh energy stocks uh so we will take a look at oil and see where that is going i do want to look at bonds and again folks uh if you follow my work for quite some time i've been bullish bonds uh because i believe more rate cuts are coming and you know a lot of people have been looking at this setup and this is the bnd uh, but a lot of people have been looking at this as a break of a flag or a pennant here and you could see here what has my attention is this could be our first a uh, higher low here um after this very extended move and if you followed my work or my charts i've been talking about this very important us 10-year treasury yield chart uh which is very important because this is a very major uh, very big level here that we've tested back in 2016 and 2012 and you can see here it's like the lowest we've, we've ever been uh, as a chart analyst i'm ex you know just by technicals this is a nice pattern to see interest rates rise but let's be honest central banks will be cutting rates uh be and this is what ray dalio has been warning about um bonds there's going to be a paradigm shift where you're not holding bonds for yield anymore it's going to be traded and people are just going to be buying bonds to sell to a greater fool because um you know holding these bonds are gonna not give you too much yield and in europe uh you actually lose money once you hold these bonds to maturity but very interesting chart will we break below this level here and i wanted to show you uh this so this is on cnbc uh go to their um markets click on markets and click on bonds and select treasuries and you can see here that the yield curve is indeed inverting again uh last week the one month was actually yielding more than the 10 year uh but the 10 year is now above not by very much but this is something to definitely you should definitely watch and i believe the fed will be cutting rates uh i believe again all the central banks will be cutting rates i do think canada will be cutting rates uh and that's something people are not really factoring for quite some time so i do like buying canadian bonds uh this is a chart the xbb which is canadian bonds and you can see here again type of patterns we like to trade um so i would buy you know i think canadian bonds and this is again not investment advice but buying canadian bonds and shorting the canadian dollar uh because not very many people are expecting the bank of canada to cut but they will for uh, various reasons uh more importantly because all these central banks are cutting 
and they all want to cut uh, against the US dollar. And you could read my work on the dollar, uh, but very important on where the dollar is going and you should be following what happens with the dollar. Uh, as many of you know, I'm very big on gold and silver because of this macro and geopolitical environment that we are heading into. And we are still playing with the first higher low swing on the weekly chart. And I expect another higher low swing. I do believe we will break eventually into new all-time highs against the US dollar. Of course, gold has done this with pretty much every other currency. Um, but it's relatively holding well. I gotta say, you know, as someone who follows gold, you see gold pop. A lot of people get their hopes up and then you know, we uh, get back to reality with a big major sell-off. Uh, but gold is holding really well <clears throat> here on the longer term chart, on the weekly chart. Excuse me, just had to get a sip of water there. Um, and I think this is a chart, again, in the long term. I still like gold as long as it's above uh, 1450 here, because this is the higher low swing we are playing with. Um, going down to the shorter time frames, nothing really that gets my attention however here on the daily you can sort of see this this candle here maybe is something to worry about this is a, a traditional fake out candle so this is why we like to wait for um uh, actual closes where a lot of new traders uh see this momentum going up and have the fear of missing out want to get into this move and then look what happens uh, a big fake out so Maybe, maybe a head and shoulder here at a very important level, uh, but the trend, you know, this is not something I like to look for multiple swings, like something like this, and this, you know, we've just had many green candles. Um, you know, I don't really trade gold and silver on the day-to-day -day basis or swing trade gold and silver, uh, but I do think on the longer term, uh, it's where you want to be. Uh, with silver, we're still playing with this level here at 1615, let's call it, uh, but a very big level here uh, for silver on the weekly, very nice weekly chart. Um, this is basically my way of trading, but on a macro scale, a larger scale on the weekly chart, and I do believe we will see a break above 1880 uh, sometime this year. Uh, again, can't really say when, but long term i do like gold and silver copper so this is a trade that i took on the four hour and let me quickly show you that we took it here on this um nice beautiful head and shoulder type pattern and we did take our profits it hit our flip zone to the t uh, at 262 ish uh, just below 262 we like to put our take profits a bit lower than that but very nice trade very nice pattern here but what I want to emphasize on this is, of course, the daily chart is what we want to watch. This is more important than the four hour chart. And you can see here we've had red, 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 of course, copper being linked to China. It is Dr. Copper. It's known as the economic um you know metal when the world is doing well, you buy a lot of copper. Uh, what I mean well, I mean the economy is doing well. And a lot of people are factoring in that this coronavirus is going to hamper a lot of Chinese growth. Uh, let's see. I wouldn't be surprised if the Chinese still give a 6% GD, uh, GDP rating for Q1 2020. Um, you know, the Chinese numbers aren't really things we should probably trust. But copper, very, very important level here. And honestly, it's not looking very good. Uh, this could be our first uh, lower high swing we are playing with, which means that we will be breaking below 250 here. So very interesting chart for copper on the daily. Um, yeah, uh, let's quickly fib this uh, just for my interest. I just want to see if we did hit. Uh, no, we didn't hit really a fib level, but very big flip zone here. Even going back here on the daily, you can see how important this is. And of course, again, folks, you can always do a line chart, see where these multiple hits have occurred. And that is your major flip zone. So yeah, this is uh, copper on the daily. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking for a first swing. Oil, because this is what a lot of people are talking about. The very big flip zone that we broke below. Uh, the one thing I don't really like about oil is this move is very extended however this is the only higher uh, higher low swing or lower high swing that we are playing with and in trends we expect at least two swings so are we getting another one perhaps this is the other swing that's forming and you can see here we had a classic break and now a retest and again to trade this we would want to see a break and close below uh, the lows here 
but I wanted to show you the four hour uh, which is giving us perhaps another picture but of course this $52 level is a very key level and if we do see price perhaps come back retest maybe pull back and then eventually break and close below uh, sorry break above uh, could be an interesting head and shoulders type uh, pattern definitely worth your attention but this 52 level is huge uh, on the daily let's see if we continue much lower but i've given my uh, opinions on why oil has to go higher because a lot of these banks are now involved in oil because they had to bail out uh, these oil and shale companies back in 2014 because of potential job loss uh, job losses so basically governments were pleading these banks to bail out and lend to these oil companies that um, you know are pretty much zombie companies so very interesting here for oil again a lot to do with the coronavirus because a lot of calculations on oil demand for china in the future because the chinese have shut down cities um, and highways and you know zero hedge post an article about how 400 million chinese are now basically under the most strict um uh lockdown laws that can be applied by the uh, uh, ccp yes it's going to impact driving in china and maybe these prices are factoring in uh that demand and it, it's sort of ironic and funny to me because it seems that right now uh oil is the only market that is um acting uh, uh with true price discovery whereas a lot of people are expecting stocks and stuff to sell off because of the fears um you know there's the meme that everyone has been infected by the coronavirus but the dow jones and uh sorry the dow is hitting 30k or 40k uh but yeah it, it's it's funny because it seems that the oil market is the only market that is adhering to um actual fundamentals and you know we heard that the saudis have come out saying that they want to cut uh their production by 1 million barrels uh let's see if the russians uh also join in but again you know i, I am watching oil mostly here on the four hour but it is definitely something to watch um going forward for next week natural gas has a very interesting setup very big flip zone is you know at buck 60 uh you know very bad year for uh, uh natural gas huge um supply gluts but here on the four hour i do like this setup maybe a bigger head and shoulder type uh pattern here where we might see uh move up here before price ranging just like it did here and then eventually uh, breakout so i do really like this chart very very prolonged downtrend and we now are just waiting for the pattern to present itself uh, we can see that there's a lot of buyers down here very very big wick that we are still adhering to uh, be patient wait for this break on uh, natural gas wheat so this is a chart i've been following for quite some time again same similar type of chart pattern i like to trade look for extended trends and we could have our head and shoulder pattern here um, a lot of the trend guys like to draw trend lines and you can see here uh, that perhaps also once we break below this head and shoulder uh, we also break below a trend line here of course i'm not too fond of trends because it is very uh, subjective on how you draw it i am more of a market structure guy looking at higher lows and lower highs and i am waiting for a break below here uh, which could give us a very good uh confirmed head and shoulder pattern on wheat soy i put this down here because we are at a very important uh flip zone level and even a demand zone right down here uh but on the four hour potential uh maybe even a dirty cup and handle uh type pattern here but definitely something that i am watching after a very very prolonged extended move and uh this is a trade that i took a few weeks back uh on the break below here very nice pattern again markets only move in three ways and that's all we are doing we're looking for these patterns to repeat themselves and get in the us dollar uh nothing something you know nothing that i would trade but if you follow my work on the long term i have given my opinion on why the dollar is going higher uh and even perhaps why the russians and the chinese might be attacking the dollar demand leading to uh some certain some future plaza accord down the line uh where the fed is forced to devalue the dollar um i think you know one of the reasons why the fed is cutting rates is because they are trying to weaken the dollar but they are now uh, causing um money to go into the stock market because 
it has to chase yield and as the market uh, makes new highs more foreign money actually goes into the dollar to buy dollars to get into the u.s stock market so the fed is just stuck uh, really where they're trying to weaken the dollar but the dollar has plenty of reasons to go higher and i've given my thoughts on my blog uh, on why i believe the dollar will be going higher this is something a lot of people are watching is this a head and shoulder here that we did broke out of i don't know but if we draw this trend line here you can see here we had a nice retest and the dollar is um going higher so will we see that big elusive 100 level uh be tested we'll look at a couple dollar pairs because we have some on the watch list but this is something i want to look at and this is the japanese yen and we've been following this for quite some time uh the yen pairs were really nice trades for us i know the four hour perhaps are we going to be moving lower or are we going to be reversing and if we believe the yen is going higher maybe a double uh, bottom type pattern here a lot of people are seeing this engulfing pattern here engulfing candle um not really a bit, very nice trend here that i would trade but a lot of the yen pairs are looking very uh interesting to say the least and i will show you uh and we can use the yen futures as a way to uh, uh provide confluence right but this is something we sort of like to look for we like to look for this patterns again head and shoulder right here and this is all we are looking for because that pattern shows us a move from uh, one trend to another uh, this was a trade we also took a while back um, we took it on this break here and we were expecting another uh, lower high swing which was confirmed on thursday with this daily candle close uh, and this is probably progressing down to the 109 level again folks not the cleanest chart but you had our higher low higher high swings a big rejection at a larger flip zone um head and shoulder pattern here and now we expected to see our multiple swings but not the cleanest not the best sort of trade uh idea that we uh sort of look for we look for things sort of like this uh, much much more cleaner on the us swissy uh you know you can see here after multiple lower highs price is beginning to um bottom or the trend is beginning to exhaust because we aren't making any more lower highs we did make one here but you can see how price reversed um and maybe even a double bottom here so we did get this break uh here uh, quite a strong break unfortunately happened on a friday uh, i do not like to hold my positions uh for swing trading uh over the weekends uh well i don't like to enter new positions if it's a position i've been in for quite some time obviously uh i'll take into account where it is but if it's a break that happened on a friday obviously we have to wait especially because it's a daily candle we have to wait for monday's uh, open to get in so let's see how price uh, reacts on the open if we will uh, and this is actually already very telling you can see we did have a retest and the buyers are here at this level at 97 40 or 50 so let's see uh this is a trade that is looking good for uh us dollar strength and this is a us swissy and uh, there is a flip zone that we would watch for our first take profits uh, level here at 98 50 pound nothing really interesting for quite some time uh we've been watching this uh pattern here again very um multiple higher lows and higher highs and are we beginning now to turn and um topple over very nice strong close below this zone that we are watching so let's see how this opens again on monday the us dollar canadian dollar again a lot of my canadian friends are here um very very important level here at 133 let's call it 50 let's see how price is going to react next week on the four hour this is the swing that we are playing with and you can see here you know this is why we do like to wait for uh closes below the swing because you can see here a lot of people probably got faked out trying to get into the trade early yes you will get a better risk reward um but you know this is a game of probabilities and uh, the better probability occurs when price breaks below so again something we'll watch maybe ideally we'd like to see a re uh, retest here uh before coming back higher and then break and you know the dollar the loonie is obviously very uh, connected uh with um uh, or correlated with oil so if oil does get that bounce perhaps we will see uh some canadian dollar strength but i do really like this zone uh we could very much 
still go and test this level and maybe in two weeks time we'll create a pattern that we can talk about aussie us dollar so we've had our second swing here confirmed we had our first one and here is our second one and we are at a very very major major uh is this no there's still uh new lows way down here going back to 20 10 2009 but a very big important level here that we did break and close below so again nothing something we want to jump into but it'll be nice to see if we do get a fake out perhaps on the four hour we can watch for some sort of pattern here to form before getting in uh, again this is why we look at multiple pairs because um you know there won't be anything or not a lot of things are going to be triggering at that time especially being swing traders we look at the four hour and the daily so this is another trade we took uh last week a very very good trade for us and that was getting in at the break here very very strong break as well on the aussie new zealand dollar um on the four hour not the cleanest but you can see here that we were at a very very major da daily level and this was a chart we covered last week as well uh but what we are still looking for is a break above 104.75 and perhaps we will see that test here before we make the beautiful head and shoulder pattern which is what we like to look for so this is definitely on the watch list for next week talked about the yen and i want to talk about these yen pairs showing us perhaps another swing on the uh, yen and you can see here we have yet to make our first lower high in this major downtrend move here or this major move and this is repeating on many patterns again the pound uh, yen is looking interesting similar to the pound us dollar um cad yen we had our move and we haven't made our first higher low swing yet um again folks do you enter now or the more better probability is to actually wait for that confirmed break because that's what confirms a swing um and if we do break below then there is big demand levels uh lower but this is you know just something interesting that we'll be watching um not here but also at the uh, uh chat room as well aussie and this is one i really like and this was a trade that uh i you know if you do have done the course this is what would we, we would consider a fib entry now because uh we did retest a fib level here and this consecutive candle is very important to obviously and we discussed that in the course so this is a trade that you know you can actually take now with a, a good amount of um uh, probability for of success what are the levels you'd be watching at maybe here at 72 but this is one that we were watching and again new zealand yen is very similar as well uh where we had this initial move again a double uh top a trade that we talk, uh, talked about last week and a trade i did take um but i did close after this initial wave here but we should expect another swing because that's just the way markets move and again we talked about euro new zealand we are still waiting for that initial higher low so we still have to make our first swing in this new trend and this could be happen occurring now but again not confirmed until we break below above previous highs here euro cad just looking at it at a very big important uh support zone here and perhaps we will see a break above 147.50 here uh very interesting let's keep our eye on this and euro swiss on the four hour very nice double bottom uh setup here uh maybe a cup and handle will form here um you know some might argue it's a weird sort of a head and shoulder here but again what this is telling us is that this trend of lower highs lower lows is now exhausting and this is the lower high that we are working with because of this lower low here and you know we just want to see the pattern because these double bottoms and head and shoulders uh they are exhaustion patterns and that's what we want to see and that is what could be occurring right now and finally well i'll look at bitcoin quickly too but i won't speak too much about it but new zealand canadian dollar was a trade that we talked about last week as well and we have made our first uh swing after a retest of the break or a lower high uh, that's all we we you know uh we make because all markets move in the same way we focus on market structure and we have our first lower high here is there still room to go i still believe so that the room uh, there's room up to 84 40 ish so let's see uh next week 
if we will make another or second lower high, perhaps final lower high. Um, actually, well, swings can happen multiple times, but once we get two swings, uh, we consider the trade a bit too extended. And finally, cryptos. Very big resistance level again that we were talking about going back on the weekly chart that even meet our FIB requirements. But a big level, of course, is the uh, psychological number of 10,000. Let's see how cryptos uh, or Bitcoin reacts here. Um, not something I trade, uh, but I know a lot of the crypto and altcoins are moving um, You know, very, very, very well. Let's look at Ethereum here, uh, Ripple. Uh, and stellar coin these are just a couple of coins i follow uh, but i think this is interesting where this break happened uh, this was a level we were watching <clears throat> and we have a pretty strong break and we've never had a break like this um, since uh, where was this well september 2019 so let's see i guess this 10,000 level is uh, very important but very interesting for bitcoin um, and definitely one that we will watch uh, so again, folks, uh, that's it for the uh, look ahead for the markets for next week. A lot of interesting setups, a lot of interesting pairs. And 2020, again, as predicted, is going to be a crazy year <laughs> in terms of the macro uh, policies and geopolitics. And this is continuing. And um, yeah, folks, again, just not don't be too surprised. Again, things that we were expecting and yeah. Um, Again, just the you're hearing the terms everything bubble, uh, and this again stems to the fact that the central banks have to basically cut rates um, and they are forcing money into stocks, killing currencies, inflating currencies, and this will just uh, continue because central banks are effectively stuck and they are losing out on ammunition and tools and it is a, a confidence crisis matter right they do not want to mention the word qe because that uh, qe was basically a one-time desperate policy to prevent a great depression like the 30s and it would be sort of bad to say hey we're back on qe because people would say hey wait a minute that means qe didn't work in the past uh, but again, folks, uh, we are excited to launch um, the chat room as well. And uh, we hope to see a lot of you there. Um, you know, professional traders, beginner traders, people who just want to learn, people who just want to follow the market. And our goal is to create a nice uh, community. Um, and we will go from there. And we hope to uh, see you in the uh, chat room.